Oh, yes, indeed. It's hashtag RDM Russell David McLean. And before we get into today's show, I just want to let everybody know it is the time for giving. It is Christmas time here at the Radio Random Network. We do all of our shopping at Amazon because Amazon is one of our biggest supporters. Whenever you visit www.radiorandomnetwork.com forward slash Amazon and do your Christmas shopping, they kick a little bit of money back to us at no extra cost to you so i want to encourage everybody to use our link radiorandomnetwork.com forward slash amazon to do your christmas shopping online at amazon you're going to be there anyway with all of that said i want to thank you so much for hitting the download button today on for the russell and mud Two show on the radio random network we have the nothing but the hits tour coming up this week and with all of that said we're going to let brother phil gibson tell you all about crowley louisiana ronnie mcdowell and friends nothing but the hit tour and then me and mud tooth are going to take you on a journey so get Get ready, get set, because you subscribed, you're listening now, enjoy. Older women are beautiful lovers. Don't miss Ronnie McDowell and Friends, nothing but the Hits Tour, Saturday, December 12th at 7 p.m. at the Grand Opera House of the South in Crowley, Louisiana, featuring Ronnie McDowell. Watching girls go by. Ken Mellons. I'm just a no. Tia Goins, The Blend, Deborah Allen. Up and coming country artist Amber Hayes. Step up, show me your moves, come on. Country artist Mandy Barnett, who has charted three singles on the country billboard charts and held the title role in the musical Always Patsy Cline. And a special tribute to the late Johnny Cash by his brother Tommy Cash. For ticket information, go to nothingbutthehits.com. Saturday, December 12th at 7 p.m. at the Grand Opera House of the South in Crowley, Louisiana. Nothing But The Hits. If you enjoyed this episode, please leave us a review on iTunes. It's Friday. Listening to Russell and Mudtooth on Radio Random Network. Take it away, boys. Yeah, they were talking about nothing but the hits tour right there. I'm hashtag RDM Russell Devin McLean. And I'm the hash brown Mudtooth. This is, I guess, the first annual Christmas extravaganza. Yeah. That's what we can call this. Yeah. As we. Christmas Jubilee. As we bring 2016 to a close, man, so it's, it's, it's flown by. Ain't it? Yes, it is. Boy, they had this year has been crazy too, man. Mm-hmm. Uh, 2015 it probably stand as a year that everybody got offended some way. Somehow. Yeah, well, you know, well, it's it's the year that that people get offended and and like it. It actually, for some reason, makes a difference to people. You know, I've been a, there's a lot of shit that's offended me. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and and most of it, I don't even say nothing about. It. And and the times that I have said something about it, really didn't make no difference. Mm-mm. Nobody you know, listened. I say, uh, man, that you know, I don't too much like that. And they say, well, Kanye oh, West, okay, he offended me. Yeah, especially I, when he said he was running for president. You know, that's another one. I challenge him to <laughs> a boxing uh, open match. open combat. I will say Luke Bryant never did get gladiator. back with us. <laughs> I, I, I challenged Kanye to a gladiator match. Yes, indeed. <laughs> Have mercy. Last time we left off, I was getting ready to gear up to go hang out with Aaron Neville. Yeah, how'd that go? Well, after the first, uh, after three Christmas carols and falsetta, it, yeah. I was kind of ready to go, but it, it didn't do bad. It didn't do bad, but uh, sad news, man. Uh, Stone Temple Pilots lead singer, Brother Steve, and I know I'm probably going to botch his last name, but uh, I think it's... uh, Scott Weiland. Scott Weiner, not Steve. Weiland. Weiland. Yeah. See, I told you. That's all right. I just know Stone Temple Pilots, but he uh, he croaked. Yeah. Well, Well, you know, I mean, the man's... He'd been been in a bad way for a few years, and... You know, that's, that's going to catch up to you. You see, that's what I had heard. Now, I didn't see or hear any of the controversy with the Stone Temple Pilots or anything. I mean, I, didn't, I don't know what is... Uh, well, I am kind of think that's, that's why it fizzled. Oh, really? Uh, but, and the man had a had a good voice. Well, and then he went on with, uh, you know, Velvet Revolver. Yeah, that's right. Now. Sure enough. And, uh, but it just, you know, 
when when that stuff gets hold to you in the way that I guess it had a hold to him, you know, you you can't make nothing stick together. Do you think, I mean, we've never talked about, we've talked about the deaths of 2015. I mean, you know, we've had uh, this year, but, Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we've acknowledged them on the show here. But do you think that comes with a celebrity, with fame? You think it's a lot of pressure than that vice, you know? Well, I think it is. I think it's one of those things that... Escape? Well, it's more available, let's say, to somebody. You know, like I, I personally, I ain't never been to a party. Or somebody's house where they had, you know, like a big old salad bowl full of cocaine, <laughs> you know, or pills or something. Mm, and they said, board. you know, it's just, you know, yeah, just take as much as you want, but eat all you take, you know. Right, you right, know? right. And, and I, and I, I never have, you know, I never have seen that. And, and I know that happens. Um, uh, you get people who, you know, make it big fairly quickly and they go from you know it's it's a bit of a culture shock you know mm-hmm. and they're not used to that kind of stuff Mm-mm. and um uh, people who claim to be their friends you know uh and people that they hang out with or, or you know people that you know help them along the way you know say well yeah sure here try this and try that and the next thing you know you know, it's three o'clock in the morning. You sit at the end of your driveway with a shaved head talking to your dog. Yeah, you know, yeah, and uh, you know, it's it's bad. I you know, I hate it. Uh, but I'll be honest with you. You know, I mean, you know, people. I know people. People that's you know, like I say, when when you when you real good musically, mm-hmm. when when all your eggs is in that basket, there's a trade off somewhere. And You're right. I know people that. You know, that they, they, that they've told me, you know, that they, you know, they smoke a little weed just to keep, keep it together. Right, right. You know, and, uh, and I guess I ain't that good to where I don't, I don't know what that feels like. So, um, you know, I, I don't, I can't, I can't argue, you know. Right, and then I think in certain aspects, sometimes the pressure get to you. Sure, and you I'm cross not... that line. Well, and, I mean, I mean, you got a lot of people depending on you, and you got what's next, and it's got to be better than what you had last time. So well, maybe that's true. Plus, I mean, you when you get out there on the road and it's night at the night, um, here, there, and yonder. Right, and you know, it's I'm, you know, I ain't never done that. Yeah, you know? I, I can't say I've. Uh, you know, a big deal for me was playing, you know, like Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. That is, yes. <laughs> a whole week. Yeah. And I was wore out on Sunday. And that's, that was, uh, um, <laughs> I guess that the, when you do them whole weeks, the, the hardest thing I think I've ever done was the, the little stacker pills that come out mm-hmm. a long time ago when they yeah, first the stackers. Out. And then by Sunday, you got to get her so damn bad, you scared, to, you, you scared to even go to sleep. Mm hmm. But uh, with all of that said, we're moving on. Um, rest in peace there, Brother Scott. Yeah, I hated it. Yeah, but it happens. Yeah. We all got that ticket. I see it. But uh, with all that said, also in the news, Mud Tooth, we'll bring this up real quick. Neil Pert. Yeah. Well, is he retired or is he ain't retired? I've heard two different things. I heard one time that he was giving it up. He's retiring. He And then... Uh, I also heard that he's just not going to tour anymore. That's, that's, I've heard both of them stories. Which, I mean, he's earned the right. If he wants to go sit on his couch, I think, I mean, oh, yeah. he's Neil Perk. Absolutely. He don't have to do it anymore. Um, you know, I mean, the be all end all of, you know, rock drummers. Um, yeah, he can do what he wants to. <laughs> um, and I'll be honest with you, I ain't a, I ain't a real big rush fan. Um, I mean, I, now I can appreciate what they do. I mean, they very, you know, musically talented. I just, right. it just, you know, it just, they just not my bag, baby. Yeah, me neither. Uh, but uh, I know all the drummers. You know, they all go to drooling when you start talking about Neil Pert. Mm-hmm. And uh, <clears throat> so, yeah, I mean, I, we, I guess time will tell. We just have to see. We just have to see. That's something else, boy. Neil Pert. You know, there's some drummers that want to be Neil Peart sometimes. You get on the stage with them. Well, yo, yeah. <laughs> what the? Absolutely. 
Yeah. You know, you go play in a simple little song and they want to, <laughs> you know, put like a five minute solo in there for some reason. Yeah. I, I never have one. <sighs> we don't need no double bass on Brown Eyed Girl. All right. Yeah. We're good. Mm-hmm. Thanks. Um, but yeah, you just, you never know. Lord have mercy. Coming up this weekend, we have the Nothing But the Hits tour. That's Crowley, right. Louisiana. And I, am, I am excited. I ain't never been as excited about going to Crowley, Louisiana in all my life. This is the first time I've ever been to Crowley. I've been there once. Matter of fact, I didn't even know the place existed. It's where Evan Edwards is from. Really? Mm hmm. Oh, Lord. Well, we might bring some shovels and a flashlight and get to digging. <laughs> you might not like what you find. Yeah, you're right. You're right. You're yeah, right. I've been to Crowley. I've been to Crowley once for work, and um, it's a nice little place. But now I hear that this joint, the uh, it's, opera house, it's supposed to be, the pictures I've seen, it looks beautiful. Immaculate, yes. Just beautiful in there. It's an old building that, um, like when I say old, I mean old, like historic. Right, it's been there for a and, while. And um, they uh, ended up uh, redoing it. Completely renovating it, and it just it looks beautiful. I bet it sounds good in there too. I can imagine Ronnie McDowell, Tommy Cash, your favorite, Mandy Barnett. Yes, indeed. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna have a good time, and look, we're gonna get some content. We're gonna play some uh, next. Uh, I just want to let everybody know too that's listening now. Uh, next week, you you here? We'll be doing a couple of ex- excerpts here and there, but the uh, next couple of weeks, Christmas and everything, we're just gonna. We're going to play, uh, this is just part one of the Christmas extravaganza, I That's guess you right. could say. Uh, next week we'll be, um, doing, you know, we'll play the interviews and, and, and all the good stuff from the, uh, nothing but the hits tour. Cause they actually, from what I understand now, correct me if I'm wrong, but. The word is they're going to actually let us talk to a couple of I, that's, folks. that's it. That is oh, it. Oh, I tell you, I wonder if they're going to, I wonder if, I hope they don't like rope me away from, Mandy Barnett. I'm gonna try not to just sit there and stare at her. That's gonna be hard. It is. And I, you know what? And I might tell her that. I'm a, I might say, look, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try not to sit there and stare at you. And if you find that I am, just slap me. <laughs> <laughs> Which is not a unpleasant. You know, I can, I can take a slap from, from her. Yes, indeed. Well, it's been a hell of a year, though. Um, We've done a lot of cool things. A lot of cool things are coming for 2016. Absolutely. Had a lot of great guests this, uh, this year. Mm-hmm. Well, you and I had put together some great shows. And I have to say that our, the, the Russell and Mudtube show by far is the, per, per, I guess, premier show on the, on the, on our network here. It's, it hit, it gets to more, more hits than, um, anything else. Even like last, uh, this week I had James Otto mm-hmm. on who is, uh, who was actually a really, really good guy. And, uh, but, uh, you know, I figured once the, uh, once it got out that he was on and it, it, the, the ratings would, uh, from that show would be bigger than the one we did last week. But no, we, we hope it, it's, it's, it's good, but well, it's, it's a certain chemistry. It is. You're right. You know, we got a chemistry. And look, folks, look, you know, y'all come out there. To Crowley to that show, and and you know you you probably run into us out there. We I'd be glad to. I'd be glad to shake your hand, photo op, talk to you. I'd take a picture with you. I might break your camera, mm-hmm. uh, but I'd be glad to take a picture with you, sign something for you, as long as it ain't a, you know, check. I'll uh, <laughs> or yeah. or summons, yeah, or summons. Um, <laughs> uh, you know, I'll be I'll be glad to talk with you. Um, I think it'd be fun, you know, to actually. You know, meet a listener or two. Mm-hmm. You know? I, I'll tell you something that's, that's uh, kind of, we're going to move on here. and We can jump it around as we always do, but mm-hmm. this is just. Folks, we don't follow what you call a format. We kind of got like a rough outline. Yeah. And half the time I forget that on the right. desk. And so we just we just kind of go with it and, uh, you know, whatever. I mean, it goes round and round, it comes out here. Yes, indeed. But, you know, all the, all the hype and noise around the Chris Stapleton thing, man. After that award show, it was it was a lot of hype there for a week, and I since then I ain't heard nothing else out of the dude. What, what, what's up with the cat, man? He might be taking a nap or something. Shit, mm, I might have been. I mean, he pretty much just killed bro, that bro country. What it, did I hear will. though? And I saw. Well, I say I hear. I saw a headline, and I didn't read the article. 
And it said something like, Chris Stapleton misses his Grammy nominations because he was watching the wrong channel. Like, he was watching something else on TV. And he was probably watching Bonanza or Gunsmoke yeah. or something. Well, yeah, yeah, that's all right. I never was him. You know, I'll be honest with you, I never did like either one of them shows. Hey, to tell you the truth, and I've watched, I try to keep up, I try to watch, you know, but the last, I think it was the Country Music Awards where he cleaned up at, uh, mm-hmm. there's no, <sighs> How can I put this? There, they they should be just one big show for everybody, which I guess that's what the Grammys are. But you know, well, you 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 kind of went in a different direction. I meant like I never did like Bonanza or Gunsmoke. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, my I, bad. That's all right. When I was a kid, we had uh, we had one television in the house, and it had two television stations. It was flipper. See, folks, folks, y'all, you know, there's a lot of y'all couldn't exist in that world. Mm-mm. You know, they was two. Television station. And, uh, you know, it wasn't no remote control. I was the remote control. Mm-hmm. You know. And it hurt your fingers. I remember that. Oh, like yeah. You'd have to hurt your fingers. And, you know, mom and daddy had the TV in their room, and you can go in there and watch it. But, boy, you'd get your ass whipped if you accidentally hit that uh, that antenna. Oh, yeah. Would call, which was nothing but an old clothes hanger with some aluminum foil uh-huh. on it. Well, this, we didn't even have, man, wasn't no television in nobody's room. Uh, and there was one in there in the living room, and that was it. Well, I do believe they probably acquired it from the dump. Or yeah. <laughs> and it, but anyway, on, uh, I want to say on Saturday afternoon, no, it had to been, yeah, when, no, Sunday afternoon, they would show, uh, the old westerns like mm-hmm. be, and the, the TV shows. It'd be like High Chaparral and the Virginian and, Wagon train or something. The Rifleman. And, yeah, and the Rifleman, which is about the only one I ever liked. Was I liked the Rifleman. Mm-hmm. And, uh, but I'd slip in there. And Dad would be sitting there on his, in his chair. Sleep. Snoring. Snoring. Sawing logs. And you couldn't change the channel. And look, you, I'd slip out. I mean, I, they ain't, they ain't a ninja in this world that was as quiet. Is what I was. I mean, I just creep up there and I, soon as I touched that knob, he said, don't you change that channel. I was like, what? Mm-hmm. <laughs> now he went from snoring to doing that. He could tell. My grandpa was the same way. He would lay back in his chair and I mean, he, I mean, just sawing logs, you know. And my grandpa, he liked professional wrestling, but not right. as much as I did, I don't think. And mm-hmm. For a while there, I remember when I was a kid, in which I, I guess it's okay to say now because they don't do it anymore, but um, they had the big satellite. Yeah. And, and Papa knew a fella, knew a fella that mm-hmm. could scramble them channels. Yeah. Or unscramble them. Right. So you could find wrestling on any time. Yeah. You know. And There's uh, other things you could find, too. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that would that would explain him sleeping on the couch all the time. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm just kidding. But uh, yeah, he would wake up out of a dead sleep too, and it's it's funny. I can't do that. My kids be gonna cut my hair and everything else. I ain't waking up. Mm-mm. I woke up with fingernail polish on my fingers before. And, well, that's interesting. Well, I'm telling you, man. Look, I've stepdaughter does it. I gotta watch her, man. I got to where I sleep with almost sleep with slippers on, you know, because. <laughs> I've been, I fell asleep on the couch before and woke up with hot pink toenails. That's nice. And that'd be some cheap, some old cheap, you know, fingernail polish they use, and you can't scrub that shit off. So they wouldn't even use good nail polish. Oh no, no, no. See, I'd I'd complain about that. Well, I just didn't. I. What you gonna say? Say so you. So if you gonna paint my nails, at least do it. <laughs> you right. You right. Hey, look, look. Why now? This is a Christmas show. Do you? Do y'all at your house have an elf on the shelf? No. Well, we do. And folks, if you don't know what the elf on the shelf is, it's a little old elf. A little old, little old dog, a little old elf. Mm-hmm. And he comes out Thanksgiving night. And when you first, you know, when, when the elf first makes his appearance, the kids have to name him. Our elf is named Alvin. Okay. Because the Chipmunk movie had come out that year, and my little girl just thought that was the, the coolest name in the world. Pajamas, yeah, so, you know. But anyway, and old Alvin, every night when the kids go to bed, he flies back home to the North Pole mm-hmm. and tells Santa Claus 
he's kind of like a middleman. Like he, 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 he helps Santa Claus keep up with the kid, whether they're doing good or bad. Right, right. And then he gets back sometime before they wake up, and he'll be moved to a different spot. Mm. Now, you can't touch him because all his magic will go away. He gets sick. I understand. Okay. And uh, these elves have been known to do just little mischievous things. Like sometimes he'll pour sugar out on the counter and get on it and make snow angels. Or last night he wrapped my little girl's uh, Christmas tree uh, in toilet paper. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's pretty neat. Yeah. They got all kind of different things. Folks, you, you all check that out. Hey, look, it's a, it's a hoot. The kids love it. And uh, you'll have a ball with it. But now you got to remember that you know, the elf needs to move. You see, we don't have an elf. We have a Rocky. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and he'd be done to eat you, elf. Yeah. Oh, he would. We, Him and I got in trouble at the Pet Smart. Oh, yeah? Yeah. They had a little toy squirrel in there. You know, little they got the squeaker thing. Mm-hmm. And um, he went ahead and just tore that up on in the store, you know. And, oh, yeah. And you can't do anything because it's like a little kid. You don't want to embarrass yourself. You don't want to embarrass You want to beat him right there. Right. So you're trying to wrestle. I'm trying to wrestle the squirrel away from Rocky, and he's growling at me, you know, because he thinks it's playtime. Well, as a matter of fact, you can tell your buddy Marlon Hargis that, that we are fixing to get a dog as well. Awesome. Yep. We're going to get a little Scottish Terrier. There you go. Also, speaking of that, and then we're going to get some Christmas stuff here in a minute, but uh, the other, when we went off air last week, you and I and Mrs. Mudtooth was talking about um, the way you can discipline a dog. Mm -hmm. Now, Mrs. Mudtooth gave me some advice about putting a dog on its back. Mm -hmm. You can't do that with our dog. <laughs> well, he is rather large. He is rather large. But you see, when I pull, you know, him and I, he, let me let me let me set this up real quick, okay? It's a rescue dog, okay? Right. So the dog tricked us, and I think some people are probably yeah right, but I'm serious. Was he looking all pitiful there when you come to get him? Oh no, he was chipper. Oh, okay. he was just the kindest little puppy, just a shaking and everything else. And you get in there, and the woman says he likes he likes play with the little rubber, uh, you know, the rubber ball. He likes to play fetch. Mm-hmm. Well, the only time that dog has ever brought his little toy ball back to me or Tanya was at that rescue play. Uh -huh. and we got home, and I threw the ball, and he brought it back, and I tried to take it, and he about ate my ass up. Uh -huh. you know, he don't like to share. But, uh, <laughs> you know, with that said, you know, me and him had a little altercation the other night, and I decided I was going to put him on his back. Well, he thought I was trying to rub his stomach. Uh huh. So he, he enjoys being on his back. <laughs> so it didn't work. <laughs> Needless to say. And by the way, you mentioned Marlon Hargis. I want to send a shout out to Marlon because he has been liking and sharing all kind of stuff on We're the timeline good. on Facebook. That's and, good. Uh, but uh, we have to get him back on here. I think he'd be he'd be open to doing uh, probably calling into the Russell and Mudtooth show one night. That'd be a, that'd be a good deal. And I'm also going to be setting up because I know T. Graham Brown. He he would he he will do it. Uh, we're going to set him up to call us uh, probably. I want to. I'd like to get him as our first. I'd like to come in with him as our first guest on the Russell and Mudtooth show with you and I talking to him. Mm -hmm. Uh, for 2016. That'd be good. That'd be awesome. That'd be awesome. And I mean, he's full of stories. Mm -hmm. You know, he's a funny guy. And, uh, hell, he's T. Graham Brown. I mean, right. I, I, but, uh, with all that said, Christmas time, Bill, do, any funny Christmas stories when you was a little mud tooth running around? And well, let's see. I remember, I remember one year we was at a relative's house. I don't remember which one, but aunt, grandma, somebody. And it, and this was Christmas Eve. Mm -hmm. And we was over there visiting, you know, and probably exchanged a few presents or whatever. Well, you know, it got on nighttime and, uh, you know, we needed to go mm -hmm. because, you know, I knew that I needed to, you know, get into bed where Santa Claus was. Mm -hmm. And they kept talking, kept talking. I'd tug at mama and I'd tug at daddy and say, you know, we need to go. 
They say, it's going to be all right. You know, I said, well, Santa Claus is going to pass me. We're going to be over here. Ain't nobody going <laughs> to get no present. You know? So, uh, finally, we, all right, we're going to go. We walked outside, and I looked up in the sky, and I saw uh, an airplane going by. Mm-hmm. And I saw an airplane. I know it's an airplane now, but <laughs> back then I saw that red light on that airplane blinking. And I lost it right there. I said, look, there's Rudolph right there. <laughs> I told y'all we had to go. Mm-hmm. And Daddy said, well, let's get on home. You know, let's get on home quick and get in the bed. Maybe he'll, you know, come back by. I said, Okay. You know, I don't think he will, but don't nobody listen to me, but he right. did. Yeah, definitely. You know, uh, um, and folks, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say right now, uh, you know, it's all right if, if, if you don't believe in Santa Claus, but don't, don't tell me that. Right. Um, my mama, if you, if you say, if you say that to her, then Santa Claus won't come. <laughs> and I believe. She knows, I believe. Yes, indeed. That's awesome. I don't really remember too much. Um, you know, we've had Christmas. I, I just remember back whenever I was a kid, Christmas. You didn't ask, or you didn't tell them. Like now, now the kids will tell you what you want, what they want. Oh, well, you always did. Well, well I, we didn't. What you got on Christmas is what you got. Well, Santa Claus, I right, Santa Claus would come like to the bank. mm Hmm. And uh now he comes to the Bass Pro Shop. Right. Right. But he would come to the bank and you go sit on his lap and tell him what you wanted, you know. And uh of course before all that or somewhere up in there you would write a list. Mm-hmm. And you would give that to your mom and daddy because mom and daddy was gonna mail that for you. Right, right. You know. Uh but that's that's what we did, you know. I never did write a note, I he wouldn't have understood it anyway. <laughs> Why you say that, you poor penmanship? Poor or? penmanship. That's yeah. it. I just, just didn't scratch uh, some hieroglyphics on that. You know, to be honest, I remember going to the old Hammond Square Mall and seeing Santa Claus a couple of times. And every picture I had with Santa Claus when I was a kid, and I don't remember a lot of them, but just about every one, I was crying. So apparently, I was afraid of the you know, old it's man. It's funny that you know a lot. A lot of kids do. A lot of kids do. They just squall and squall. Um. <laughs> And then, I always liked him. I thought he was a pretty good old boy. And then yeah. there was that one time out there at the Hammond Square Mall where the Santa Claus got busted from stealing from Sears. Do you remember that? I do kind of. <laughs> vaguely. <laughs> vaguely. Yeah, like yeah. like bad Santa. Yes. Yes, indeed. Well, anyway, what I've done here is I've looked up some things. And uh, Do you have a Christmas tree? I mean, you guys got a Christmas tree. Absolutely. Already, well, right? i got three Christmas trees. In have mercy. Are any of them real? No. No. Okay, well. They're all artificial. I have a top ten list here that uh-huh. was probably ripped off of the David Letterman show because that's the only people I know. And, uh-huh. But I thought it was pretty funny. It's a sign you bought a bad Christmas tree. All right, now you can elaborate. That at number ten, it is two foot tall, 40 feet wide. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> huh? Or, or, you know, number nine be the salesman's open opening line would be, uh, you're not a cop, are you? Yeah. Or oh, you bought that at the back of a van. Mm-hmm. It smells like a skunk, Daddy. <laughs> <laughs> or it looks suspiciously like a broom handle with a with a lot of coat hangers. <laughs> What'd you think about that one? That's pretty good. Number seven is uh, while you sleep, it gets liquored up and takes the family caravan for a joyride. <laughs> yeah, that sounds like some of my kinfolk. <laughs> No, number six, it says uh, each brand to have Duraflame printed on it. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. It keeps heckling you for a lame top ten list. Or, uh, number four, it, it's very small and says air freshener on it. Now Black that ice. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah well, I was thinking to say, now that was the one on the boat. You know, that's the Christmas tree. On Black ice. Hey, and tell me, what, what does Black ice smell like? Yeah. Uh, I've used it. I'm going to say this. It is a favorite amongst the folks who use those little things. It's, you see, I would. Does it like cover up more weed than than the regular kind of does? Now, I didn't use it for that purpose. I I, I didn't say you did. (laughs) But I I know that you know people. 
Well, I've used them. Yeah. Uh, black, it, it's just a, uh, I don't know. It, Is I it more it, weed absorbent it, than the other flavors? Well, actually, you know, there's a, <laughs> now you're going to laugh at this, and I don't know if you've seen them or not, but you can go up, and no offense, but you can go to Habib's Best Stop number 10 or number right. 12 or number 1, because they all sell them. Right. But they have a little can that sits up there by the cash register, and it's called Blunt Away. Nice. Now, that little can, they're proud of it. Mm-hmm. But supposedly you spray that and what, gets rid of the smell. Now, I, I don't know personally, but I know a friend who knows a friend that sprayed some one time and didn't cover that shit up. Right. I'm just saying. And that was a paranoid ride home for me. Well, him. I mean, I know, see, I know a lot of fellas who are real good at, quote, unquote, detecting the odor of burnt marijuana. Really? And uh, so I would be interested to know, you know, like if you could confuse their senses or not. Yeah, you're talking about that, and we was talking about, you know. How do we go from Christmas? I, I don't know. A tree, I guess. But with that said, I mean, it just reminded me, like, can you imagine, like, Jamaican Christmas? You know, they, well, I don't know. I, do Ross Farr and celebrate Christmas? I don't know what they're doing. I, I don't know. I, I, they had a Jamaican dude at Walmart with the bell, you know. Yeah, but that just means he was standing out there with a bell. He's just Salvation Army, money. trying to sing Christmas carols, reggae style, yeah. you know. Now, he might not even been a real reggae guy. I don't know. Did he have a uh, 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 one of them sack hats on that was full of hair? Mm. You know, they, they they get so much hair, and they wear that sack hat, and it sticks out in the back and makes the head look like one of them, uh, one of them aliens. Yes. You know? I know exactly what you're I'm talking about. I'm waiting on his second jaw to come out and get me. Yeah. Those guys look mean all the time. You ever notice that? They don't look nice. I don't know. The ones I see are smiling. Most really? of them. Well, cause they Merry hide, Christmas. You know? Now, I tell you what, one of the scariest things I ever seen in my life was a Jamaican policeman. Come on. Scared the hell out of me. Um, we had went on a cruise, and uh, I don't know why the group decided they wanted to go shopping instead of going to a nice place. <laughs> so we, we, we were in Montego Bay, Jamaica. Right. And... We're getting this Jamaican taxi, and folks, if if you can ride in a Jamaican taxi, there ain't a roller coaster in this world that'll scare you. I mean, that's just guys. That was, you know, most some of the most thrilling <laughs> minutes of my life. But anyway, we get to this place that you know was loosely defined as a shopping center, and uh, now over there is it tents? I'm not making no, fun no, of no. It's, it, was, it was the buildings. Okay, you know. Now I wouldn't have, you know, I'd, I'd been afraid to light a match or, or, you know, for a strong wind to come. But it was buildings, you know. I don't know if it's up to, you know, what you call code or not. Mm-mm. But uh, anyway, we we sitting there, and because yeah, I mean, I wasn't gonna buy nothing. The thing about the Jamaicans is, all right, and this is back, hell, I don't, ten years ago, more than that. And uh, at the time, all right. One U.S. dollar made 40 Jamaican dollars. Really? Yeah. Hell, you can live over there about 13, 14 bucks. You're good for the whole year. Right. And so they would, like, they'd get up on you. Like, hey, buy this, buy this, buy this. And nothing had a price tag on it. Everything was negotiable. Okay. That's my kind of story. Right. Everything was negotiable except for the coffee. Now, the coffee, they was proud of it. It was called, like, Blue Mountain or something. And whatever it was, it was. They wouldn't. They wouldn't too much back down on it. But everything else, you like. How much is Bob Marley T-shirt? You know, and they say uh, thirty dollars, and say, "Well, I'll give you two. You know, and you'd end up paying like five for it. You know, but it was the worst quality material. You know, it was just terrible. Mm-hmm. It lasted you about two washings, and it'd tear up. But anyway, we sitting there outside one of these stores, mm-hmm. and. This Jamaican policeman walked by, and first off, he could have been a wrestler. I mean, he was a good six and a half foot tall, probably 250, 275, what an ounce of fat on him, arms big around as a pine tree. He had a hog leg on. He had a gun on that I swear looked like it was a foot long. Uh, I, I'm serious. I, it's just, you know, like a dirty hairy 44 Magnum on his hip, you know. And he had them, uh, he had them man with no eyes mirrored sunglasses on, and he was walking around there just, I mean, daring somebody to do something. <laughs> you know, just daring them. Still this. I mean, look, he was ready to dispense justice. 
Mm-hmm. And uh, I just watched him. I said, oh, shit, you know. I'm <laughs> <laughs> I was ready to get out of there. Yeah. I wasn't doing nothing, you know, but drinking Red Stripe beer. I drank a bunch of Red Stripe beer on that trip. It's good over there. That's their, that's their main. Uh, that's like a, their, uh, I guess, Bud Light or Miller Light. Yeah, that's their right? deal. It's just Red Stripe beer. And, uh, Never tried it. And they and they had a pretty good slogan. Uh, the slogan for Red Stripe beer was Hooray Beer. I like that. <laughs> yeah, simple. Yeah, hooray beer. That's it. <laughs> you know? Drink up. That's right. Uh, I started drinking it that morning when we pulled in. I don't know, about 7, 8 o'clock. And I didn't stop um, till we left that night. Um, I had an interesting experience happen to me, though. Um, we had uh, We went to Jimmy Buffett has, you know, this chain of Margaritaville restaurants. Mm-hmm. And they got one there, and that's where everybody went to eat. Now, it's sitting on the side of this cliff overlooking the ocean, and it's beautiful. Mm-hmm. And they even had a water slide that would shoot you out into the ocean. Mm-mm. So um, I had been wanting to eat the jerk chicken. Now, I don't know if you know what that is. I heard of it. Okay. It's kind of like Jamaican's barbecue. Okay. and But it's real hot. With peppers, they they put hot peppers in it. But once you get past that, it's good. That's just how they do. So I'd been wanting to try it, and we, uh, I got some, and I eat it, and it was hot. God mm-hmm. bless, it was hot. But you know, thank God that red striped beer. You know, I've been drinking that red striped beer, and I had me a couple of more. You know, and uh, I had to go to the bathroom because I'd been drinking a lot of red striped beer. Now I knew something told me said now. Wash your hands real good, <laughs> you know, for, before you go. Right, right. Right, because you're going to be touching some stuff, right? So uh, I did. Boy, I got up there, and I I, I mean, I, I washed them, sang Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. <laughs> Same birthday you know, birthday something. Right, all that, you know. And uh, then I went and, you know, went to the bathroom and washed them again. Mm-hmm. Come sit down. Well, evidently, I didn't wash them as long as what I should have. Right, right. And I was sitting there at the table with my wife. And it started getting warm. <laughs> kind of <laughs> south of the border. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and that and that warmth turned into a burning. Mm. You know. I know that feeling. And, uh, I mean, and that burning turned into a scorching. And uh, I had never experienced a sensation <laughs> like that, and it wasn't ple- it was not pleasant. Lighter fluid to do that too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I looked at her, and I said, "I'm on fire." And she said, "What?" I said, "I, I'm, I'm burning." <laughs> <laughs> and she said, "What are you talking about?" Well, mind you, I'm trying to hold it together. I mean, because I'm it's it's getting bad. Mm-hmm. Okay. And that's when in my, you know, now like I say, I've been drinking red striped beer all day. So your mind, it don't operate on that linear path like it normally does. It goes hither and yon, you know. Mm-hmm. And the 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 fact that this place had a water slide popped into my mind. Bing! <laughs> water slide. And look, I, <laughs> I didn't say nothing to her. I just got up. <laughs> I just got up. I started walking. She said, where are you going? I just kind of waved, you know, and and I, I got up at that water slide, and I think I pushed two kids out of the way. <laughs> Move. Right, just full, full. And I hit that water slide, and I mean, that thing just, choof, like, next thing you know, you in the ocean. Poosh. I'm in the ocean. Instant relief. Instant relief. I was happy, you know. I said, man, this is great. And then I said, I'm in the ocean. I <laughs> said, <laughs> so I'm in the ocean and I'm drunk. Mm-mm. Don't and mix. I, and I got to, you know, I got to, I mean, you couldn't touch a bottom neither, man. Okay. Mm-mm. I mean, I this, you know, fairly deep water. I can imagine. And, uh, you know, I looked around for trying to figure out how I was going to get out you know, in my drunken you know, I was trying to figure out how to, you know, get out of this this pickle I'd found myself right. in. And uh, I look over and I see 
there's a ladder that they got, you know, for you to climb up out of there. Right. But it was quite a ways away, I'd say probably, I don't know, a good 30, 40 yards, which is a pretty good swim for a drunk man. <laughs> and the, the, the tide wasn't going the right way. Really? So it's fighting me. Mm. And I'm swimming and I'm swimming. And I look up <laughs> and I see my wife looking over the balcony at me. And she's got that look on her face like I, I'm fixing to be a widow. <laughs> you know? And I finally got my drunk ass up on that ladder and climbed up. And it basically it puts you up under like you'd have to walk up some stairs and go back to the restaurant. So uh, I got up on there, and there was two of them Jamaicans down there painting, like painting the wall or something. You know? And, uh, you know, I'm heaving and hoeing, you know, and and they, they just wasn't paying no attention to me. I said, well, thanks for the help there, fellas, <laughs> you know. And they kind of laughed at me, you know. And I, but, yeah, that was a that was an experience. Yes, indeed. You were talking about that that slide that, that's going down in the ocean. Mm-hmm. Um, and I might have told this story before. I don't care. I'm going to tell it again. What the hell? Uh, now, I've never learned to swim. You have? Never. I've worked out on a tugboat. Didn't know how well it didn't matter out there anyway. If you you go to the river, you're gone. But Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't. That's not the place mm-mm. to try to swim. Mm-mm. But with that said, um, Tanya, her and I was probably been together about a year, and she wanted to take a vacation. I said, what the hell? I've never really been on vacation per se. I went with my dad a few times. You know, I think we visited Graceland, Elvis's house, you know, different little things. Mm-hmm. Well, she books the Great Wolf Lodge in um, it's Dallas, Texas, somewhere around there, mm-hmm. I want to say. Now, I recommend this place to anybody that wants to go. It's it's real cool. You know, they got the indoor water park, outdoor water park, always got something to do. Mm-hmm. Anyway, this is a resort, but... They got this huge ass water slide. Well, bro, first of all, I told them I'm not doing that. <laughs> I'm gonna go in the kiddie pool. That way, I because sooner or later I'm gonna make a spectacle of myself somehow. <laughs> because it always happens, I'll end up where I can't touch, which is crazy. Because I am, you know, That's, I'm all of about six three, six yeah, I four. I know. I was gonna say you got to get in a pretty good bit of water. Well, they had some pretty good bits of water over there. Well, anyway. Tanya, you know, they had an open bar outside as we was laying out in the sun. And, oh, that's nice. Mm-hmm, they had them big old glasses of I don't know what the hell we were drinking. And mm-hmm. uh, Tanya finally talked me into it. So her and I go up, the, uh, and, and the kids was with us. We go up to the, to the tip top. And by the time we got to the tip top of this damn thing, I'd sobered up a little bit <laughs> from looking down. Right. And I'm I'm not just scared of heights. I'm like, I'll have a heart. I'll, I'll get on the ground and crawl. That's I mean I'm not. I'm I'm a fr- I'm scared to death of heights. Mm-hmm. You know, just as much as I am of snakes. And uh, anyway, what you do is you get in this. Uh, you know, they get in the inner tube. Well, I figured I'd be smart. Like, well, I'm gonna do this because I don't want to show my sissy side to my right, woman. Right? No, absolutely. Yeah, you know, especially. I mean, we ain't been together about a year now, so I mean. You know, I'm still, it's still honeymooning, so I got to be sure. a man. Now I'd tell her, I'd, I'd cry, baby, right. please. But anyway, I figured I'd sit in to where I can see. I said, at least I can see where I'm going. Mm-hmm. I, it don't work that way. Anyway, we get into this inner tube, and my big ass is sitting on one side, and Tanya and the kids are sitting on the other side. Oh, and, it was one of them doubles. Oh, yeah. It was a big inner tube. Okay, now. I got you. Because you know, some of them rides is like that. Like it, some of them is just for one person, mm-hmm. you know, and then some of them they'll have like the two, and I've seen like the three people and or two. Mm-hmm. Well, we get up there, and old boy pushes, and he, you know, I kind of laughed a little bit because he had to put a little umph behind right, it. Right, he had to get a little grunt. Right, because the water quit flowing underneath it when I sat down. Yeah, it started kinda, flowing on the side. Right, you kinda, know what I mean? You done damned the river. Right. <laughs> So, man, he pushes us, and if you can just imagine, now, this is going to be a crazy, uh, I guess, uh, comparison, but if you can just imagine being flushed down a commode, (laughs) I can just imagine this is what it's like, okay? We hit the first turn, that damn inner tube flipped. I wasn't, all I can see was behind us. I couldn't see (laughs) in front of me no more. Right. 
I showed my sissy side then, son. I started hollering. And Tanya was laughing. And you get to this one point, and when you go down, you know, it's you take you're going around. You're uh-huh. going around. It's like a big old bowl. Yeah. Right. And they got a hole now. As I was sitting there, I said, there's no way this inner tube's gonna fit down. There's no way I'm fitting down this hole. Right. So it slowed down. So I was like, okay, it ain't that bad. And all of a sudden that somebody took off again and brought us through that hole, bro. <laughs> I'm glad we was in water because I pissed all over myself. <laughs> <laughs> and when we hit, and I'm glad they didn't have them little blue pills or whatever they put in them things too, because I'd have shown enough toll on myself. That's a wild tale. Yeah, <laughs> no, it's not neither. No, it ain't. Mm-mm. That's another story for another time. <laughs> but when we hit that water, you know, and it, it hit my back, and I was the, the damn inner two flip dude. I thought I was a goner. <laughs> Thought that was the end of old Russell. Mm-hmm. So I told him, sit on that. I'm going to float the Lazy River. I, I like it, Lazy River. It was fun, but they had a little boy, a little asshole, mm-hmm. and they had them buckets of water. Yeah. And he would, I watched him the first go around. I seen him up there, and he was waiting on me. And that's no lie. He you with that water. He must have seen me come off of that slide is what it was. Uh-huh. And every time I would pass through there, he would dump that damn bucket on me. And then he'd run to the other side where they had a little water gun. And, I mean, he shot me all in the back of the head with the damn water gun. And I got out of the Lazy River one time. I was going to whip his little ass. <laughs> I swear to God. But I never found him. He took off after that. But, yeah. Well, look, you talking about thinking you're a goner here a little while back. I don't know if I had slept wrong or something. And, uh. My neck was hurting. I had a catch in it, so I couldn't get it. It hurt. Mm-hmm. You know, just just enough to aggravate. Mm-hmm. And uh, I told my wife about it. Well, my wife has got one of these. They call it a tens machine. Okay. And it's just it's little like look like electrodes. They got little pads, and you put them on just for your back. Mm-hmm. And uh, I said, well, "What does it do?" Because I know I've seen her use it, you know. And she said, "Well, it just it's uh it don't shock you." But it stimulates your muscles and it, it it'll help. She said it helps my back. I said, "Well, you just you want to put it on my neck?" She said, "Yeah." <laughs> I said, "Okay." And so I let her put it on my neck. You know, now I ain't never used this thing. Mm-hmm. Right? Now she uses it all the time. So you know, um, I didn't know. I said, "Well, you know, I guess it's on there, right?" And she looked. She said, "Yeah." Uh, she said, well, "Just plug it in." Well, I didn't realize that she had that thing. You know. Cranked it up. Wide open. And I I plugged that in and I have never felt a sensation like that. Look it <laughs> it made my it made my head jerk to one oh, yeah. side. And I went, eh, eh, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and she's laughing at me mm-hmm. because she thinks I'm messing with her. Mm-hmm. I'm going, Don't you hate that? And look, I can't even, I couldn't even say nothing. Mm-mm. I was going, eh, eh, eh. <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and I looked and I saw myself in the mirror and like, I just knew, I said, oh, well, I'm, I'm having a stroke. This is it. I'm going to die. And she's right? laughing. I, I said, I'm, I'm fixing to, I'm fixing to go see mama. Mm-hmm. You know? <laughs> But that's what it was. She said, "Oh God, I got it all the way." Hold on, and she turned it down. You know, and it was man. I man, I didn't know what it done got hold to me. You know, yes, it did. She's a, see. That's the thing about being a funny man. You know, we. I, I you're the same way. I, I joke around with Tanya and them kids all the time. Yeah, but they don't know when you're being serious, right? When you get in a heap of trouble and you need some assistance, they laughing their ass <laughs> yeah, off at just, you. Ha, ha, ha. You're like, no, really, the car is on my foot. Please move. <laughs> Thank you, Jason. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I wasn't playing about that. That was. Mm-mm. Well, I told you I had one crawl over my foot back in the springtime when I was turkey hunting. You did. Yeah, you did, and I that that probably I'd have went and seen Mama on in. <laughs> oh, they don't bother me as long as I can see them. You know, I mean, I ain't gonna you know pick one of them up and dance with it. Or not, you know, but uh, there's some that will. Oh, I I know. I seen them on TV. It, it must be. It must just be. You know, one church of them up in there because every time I've ever seen them, it's been the same ones. And uh, but they look like they're just having a world of a time. I'll say that. And then they Folks, got, you don't know what we're talking about. We're talking about them snake handlers up in, uh, like up in East Tennessee and, you know, places like yeah, that. Yeah, and they, they fall out, though. You got one over there having convulsions in the corner. I don't know if that's the 
the Holy Spirit or because of that venom from Man, that snake got bite? Bit. Well, if he got bit, it means he ain't living right. Is what that they? is that what? I said deal, yeah. Mm-mm. Mm-hmm. That snake's going to tell on you. So he ain't telling on me because I ain't picking. The Lord gave me enough sense not to pick up snakes. Yeah, thank God. You know, I mean, I just I ain't doing it. How can you get from, I mean, in the Bible, it was a serpent, which is pretty much, I guess, a snake, snake. that convinced Eve to bite the apple, right? Mm-hmm. To, so how, I, I, I don't understand that, and I'm not trying to pick on a religion or anything because I don't understand it, and I guess ignorance or whatever, but how do you go from, okay, you know that some bitch is bad. Well, it's a, it's a, it's some verses in the Bible there. I forget what book it's in, folks. I, you have to forgive me, okay? Uh, but it's some verses in the Bible there that says that uh, that you know the 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 true believers of you know take up the serpent and this that and other, okay? And 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 it's one of those. It's some of those verses that you know most of us don't interpret literally, except for them people, okay? That explains you know, And they'll have a major jar you know strychnine up there on the on the pulpit and they'll all go up there and take them a which i got a pretty good idea that ain't strychnine it's moonshine yeah i was thinking the same. but uh because they they can go up and take them a pull off of it you know and they'd be out there you know dancing in a circle and shaking them snakes you'd have to drink some moonshine to shake it if fool with them things man. well you you ever hear that old story about the ones i forget who it was it was some it was some singers that was uh <laughs> they ended up singing in one of these churches. <laughs> and they didn't know. Mm. You know. Is it Statler Brothers? I, I don't know who it was, but they was, <laughs> you know, they didn't know. And, uh, you know, they were sitting there and they started all this, you know, foolishness. And one of them asked the other one, said, where's the back door? <laughs> the other one said, I don't think there is one. The guy said, well, reckon where they want one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, really. <laughs> Handling snake handler, huh? mm-hmm. that's, that's crazy. I I couldn't do. I just, I'm sorry. I, I, that's what it was come to. I'm I'm scared to death of them things, man. Yeah, I I don't cotton all that. We we never did do that at the at the Kentwood First Baptist Church. Mm-mm, no, no, no. <laughs> Down there at the Lawrence Baptist, there in yeah, the lines, we never, never did, did that. Do either. that. They wasn't no. Uh, they wasn't no snake handling. Mm-mm, went on. Mm-mm. Uh, well, look now it's. Christmas, what 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 you gonna do? What I'm gonna do for Christmas? I'm gonna <laughs> spend a lot of time with my youngins, mm-hmm. and uh, are they all coming over? Yes, yes, and we're gonna go. Uh, we'll probably go see the Santa Claus, and uh, been saving the Christmas tree. We haven't put our tree up yet. We're saving it for. Uh, we're not. We get all of them together. That way, that'll be a hell of a an extravaganza. I'm gonna tell you what, man. That Christmas tree in there that I got. Is the that's the best Christmas tree I ever bought. Um, I, I it's 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 amazing how far we've come as a society. Mm-hmm. Um, there's no, they, I mean, all, there's only one thing that plugs in. That's to the wall, right? And everything else, when you drop that section in that other section, it lights up. That's it. It's uh, that's it. And it goes from uh, it from it's this LED lights. And go from the clear to the colored. All you gotta do is push a button. Yeah, they have come uh, come a long way. With I them. mean, just I remember. It's something. I remember when they come out with the with the Christmas lights, and my grandma had them that had the. They sang, you know, they they did the Christmas carols. Oh yeah, was, yeah, oh yeah. It was uh, now it was midi, you know. Yeah, it was oh, yeah. cheesy as hell, but the lights would blink. Rudolph, you know, when Rudolph was on, cause they was blinking ninety to nothing. Oh yeah. Yeah, diddly, diddly, yeah. Diddly, 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 diddly. Oh yeah, I remember them. And I remember um, I had an uncle. He just kept his shit up all year. He... Well, I mean, after Christmas, they turn into Fiesta party lights. That's it. You know, you just turn the you just turn the sound off on. Right, and then when you you know when Christmas time comes again, it's their Christmas lights. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I'm gonna be honest with you now. In the in the early years of my marriage, uh, I was known to. Leave the lights up a little, a little past what they should. Be. Like I, I think the I think the latest I took them down was like late February, early March. It's not that bad. Yeah, it's pretty bad. Is it? Yeah, I mean that's we getting three months past Christmas. 
Well, you see, we, we can't have, uh, we, we don't do the, the blow ups and the Christmas lights and all that because our neighbors are still our shit. Yeah. You know, or they used to. I think they moved out and left because I think they stole our other neighbor's luggage off her porch. Oh, I swear. And she's mad. And this lady, I mean, she's a nice lady. She's a single mom. And mm-hmm. whew, to hell she's been. They stole her gas tank. And I'll tell you what, that lady, she, she, she ain't afraid. She walked over there straight up in the middle of a bunch of crackheads and called them all out. Mm-hmm. You know, but yeah, she said somebody stole her luggage and a bunch of them moved out last week. So I would imagine they mm-hmm. got her luggage. Well, you know, they need something. They've been waiting to move. They just need something to pack it. Mm-hmm. They didn't want to waste their Walmart bags. They wanted to, they That's needed right. that for their dope. Did y'all, uh, have y'all went, y'all go around looking at Christmas lights? We do. We went to, um, forgive me because, uh, you know, I can't remember the name of the, uh, the place there in, in Denham Springs. I think it's in Denham Springs. Um, is it the one with all the big inflatable stuff? No, this one's uh, it's something that was, uh, maybe it's not Denim Springs. Maybe it's, uh, well, yeah, I guess it is considered Denim Springs. This is a, this thing's been going on for years and years and years. The messengers? Yes. Okay, yeah, they just started that um, um, here this week. Uh, we went by there, we went looking uh, last week, but they hadn't got it up yet. And so uh, we, we'll we probably go here you know, shortly. That's a big event, man. They oh, it's a the, big deal. They, they, uh, they've they been shut doing that it. whole highway down for that. Oh, yeah. That's, that's been doing it for a long time. They got like a little wooden, um, the animated thing. I, it's, it's amazing. I mean, that what all these people do. Uh, they got the North Pole out there. You can go touch the North Pole. Yeah. It's don't cold. lick it. Yeah. Don't lick it. Mm-mm. Like an old boy Christmas story. Mm hmm. Had to come get the fire department to get you off there. Or Lloyd Christmas on, uh, Dumb and Dumber. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and we went to, they got a place, uh, over in, uh, one of them subdivisions and they have a bunch of inflatable. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's pretty neat to look at. Uh, cause you get that many just jobbed up in there. It's pretty cool. Um, you know, folks, you know, you know, it's, you know, go out and look at stuff. You know, put a few lights up on your house. Don't be a, don't be a Grinch. Mm-mm. Don't be a Scrooge. Hell, I ain't got a few lights on mine. I look, you I do. don't like getting on the roof. Mm-mm. I don't like it. I can't. I got stuck. Yeah. In my I, don't, house. I don't like it, but, uh, I got a few lights up on mine. Um, Speaking of Scrooge, that's what, you know, I, it's, it's time for me to watch it. That's, that's the one. That's my favorite, uh, Scrooge. Yeah. You yeah. Bill Murray Scrooge? No, 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 no. The, the, my favorite. Well, I, okay. A Christmas Carol. Okay. Okay. But my favorite version is one where George C. Scott is Scrooge. Okay. That's, uh, <clears throat> cause that come out kind of when I was a kid and he was a good one. I just, just mean old son of a bitch. See, I, I liked one. I liked, I mean. But I'll be honest with you, that Disney one that just come out here a couple of years ago was very good. I think Jim Carrey played Scrooge in it. Uh, I, don't, I a, can't say I've seen that. Oh, it's good. And you see, we watched the Disney one, but it's the animated one with uh, Scrooge McDuck. Oh, it? that one. Yeah. 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 Well, I mean, that one's pretty good. <laughs> it was, it's not, you know. But, you know, I mean, when you start, you know, you start seeing all that, man, it's, it's Christmas time. You know? Mm-hmm. You know, you kind of get in that, in that Christmas spirit, you know, might, maybe you'll smile a little easier. Yeah, it's, you know, a, you know it, I, I'm going to be honest. I don't really get in the Christmas mood until all the kid that week of really right. is whenever I really kind of get motivated. Other than that, I just, it, it's, it's, I guess as an adult, it's just changed. Sometimes it's hard to find that magic with all these well, Black it, Friday it sales is, and Cyber Mondays but that's the, that's crap. The, that's the trick, Russell. You got to, you know, if now and again, every now and again, you got to slow down. Mm-hmm. You know. And enjoy it. You know, and you sit there in your chair and you watch them youngins playing with stuff, you know. And maybe you have an adult beverage in your hand and maybe you don't. You got to with all them kids at the house, do, boy. Yeah. You do, you know, you just sit there and you enjoy it. Man. Now, my kids, you see, my little boy, um, the youngest little boy, he... Uh, <laughs> We brought him to see Santa Claus last year, and I thought it was the coolest thing in the world because, uh, you know, all that week we was getting, he was gearing, they was gearing up, you yeah. know. And um, I asked him what he wanted for Christmas, and he wanted an Xbox, but he wanted two controllers so he can play with me. Oh, yeah. And that was so cool. And then when we seen Santa Claus, he sold me out. He said, I'd rather have a four wheeler. 
<laughs> now, as you know, the year progressed, he he did. He got into the Xbox, the games, and all that. And I don't know if it's the violence from the video games or what, but you see, we brought him over to the church, and I had to kind of discipline him a little bit because we got in there, and it was Easter, mm-hmm. and he's going to see the Easter bunny, and he turned and looked at me and said, I think I'm going to whip that Easter bunny's ass. <laughs> did he now? And I said, son, you can't say ass in church. <laughs> no. And he said, well, you just did, Daddy. I said, yeah, but you... Uh, just for the benefit of instruction. Yeah. So, uh, you know, you got to kind of watch him. Sometimes he he's a loose cannon. Lord, Lord. Whipped the Easter Bunny's ass. That's he wanted to whip him. What about the Easter Bunny makes you just want to whip his ass? I mean, he brings you candy. Yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, I, you know, that would keep me from wanting to whoop somebody. He wanted to whip the yeah, Me too. I liked man. him. I liked him uh, Reese's peanut butter. And I ought not say that. I know you. You've been on diet. Here, well, we can't say diet. What you mean? That can't say diet. You can't say the D word. Well, what, what, what it's am I a supposed lifestyle to? change, bro. Uh, okay. Like, <laughs> that that sounds really, like. Do you know what that sounds like? That sounds like you like a, you know, like you alcoholic trying to quit drinking or something. Well, it is almost. I love. Well, the I, hell well out but of what I'm saying is, it's you know, you got to come up with all that kind of <laughs> foolishness. Oh, well, what you know, it? you say diet is discouraging. And lifestyle change ain't. Mm, it sounds good. Uh huh. To who? Me. So I. Well, I well, let me ask you this. So <laughs> so you know, right? Okay, you know what you're trying to do, right? Mm-hmm. And so, um, so you instead of calling it a diet, even though you know that it's, it's a, a diet, diet you're going to call it a lifestyle change. Yeah. So you're going to lie to yourself, then. That's what it well, is. Well, sometimes you've got to, bro, because that diet, I'll say, well, I'll have a cheat day. Lifestyle, lifestyle change, you can't have that cheat day. you got to go on with it. No okay. more no more honey buns. I mean, hey, look, man, I, I'm all for it. I need, well, I need to do some myself. Don't pull my man card, but I'm getting ready to do some yoga. I'd I'd like to see that. <laughs> it's 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 Diamond Dallas Page DDP. I, I, I'd like to see you doing some yoga. Now it's not necessarily yoga. What it is? Well, I mean, it's, it's either yoga. Or it's not. Well, he called it yoga, but it's 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 not like getting in touch with your inner self and your decor and all that. It, it's basically just it's something for fat people. Is it just stretching? Is that it's what basically it is? some stretching. Some stretching. But it's Diamond Dallas Page helping you do it from you know the wrestler. So. Uh huh. Mm. Okay, I figured it'd be pretty cool. Oh, I, I'll be honest. I, I wished you would uh, <laughs> call me <laughs> and alert me whenever you uh, get ready to do. You that. might have to do a couple of these by yourself if it's too much stretching. I, I, I I'd really like to. I'd like to see that. Mm-hmm. Because uh, I got to watch stretching and everything. The other day, I got out of the shower and boy, I had a pain in my chest. I thought I was going down. Uh huh. I was standing on my titty. <laughs> Where's Peter Crunker when you need? Yeah, him? really. You can have them now. <laughs> but no, um, I got to do something. I mean, it's just it's the, it's really the kind of the wrong time of the year for me to try to do it right now. I mean, look, I've is. been noticing my britches is a little bit tight, uh, and it's it's. I mean, I know what it is. It's uh, Thanksgiving just passed, you know, and. Uh, it's going to be Christmas here in a little bit. And, and you know, you eat, you eat the stuff that you don't, you know, you don't normally eat all the time. Mm-hmm. See, I got, I hope you don't eat it all the time. Um, but, um, you know, I, I just, you know, probably, you know, after Christmas, I'm, hey, that's I'm back on. Of I'm just getting a jump on it, you know. Yeah, you're going to, you know, you're going to get ahead of the game. That way I won't lie to myself come New Year's. Right. Say, uh, my New Year's resolution this year is to drop 20 pounds. Right. I'm going to. I'm going to have a lifestyle change. I might get down to my old fighting weight. The, the wrestling scene around here is starting to get hot again. Oh, yeah? I might have to bring out old Richard Head. Old Richard Head? You got to get your hair cut. I don't know about that. <laughs> I don't know if Tanya would let me. <laughs> I'd love to see that. Mm. <laughs> They've had, they had pictures. I don't know, you know, moving moving around as much as I have, I... I've I've seemed to have lost uh, the, some pictures that I'd had, and uh, but it was a uh, it was a hell of an experience. <laughs> had a good time doing it, but uh, yeah, I um, I, I you know I need to I need to back off the table a little bit, dude. But, it's uh, it's it's I'm not gonna I mean it's easier said than done. 
but my thing is I've done this a week. If I can do it a week, I got it whooped. Mm-hmm. You know, my biggest thing is the sweets. Yeah. I, I love to, I mean, you know, it ain't that I eat a lot. It's just what I eat. Mm-hmm. And I got all them kids and I want to be like Dewey Cox and his kids from walking hard. Mm-hmm. You know, I want to spend them. I want to be around for a little while. Mm-hmm. And plus that doctor gets on my damn nerves every time I see him. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm paying him to tell me you need to lose weight. Now that's something I don't understand. That's every time I see him. And he remind Russell, you're 365. Well, no shit. Yeah. You know, I still got the little white stuff from the, the oatmeal cream pie <laughs> right. ate on the way to the doctor's yeah. office. Are you still smoking, Russell? Well, and it's always the same. Well, not as much. <laughs> I didn't smoke one before I walked in here. <laughs> right. <laughs> if that makes you feel it. Right, right. But, you know, I don't know. You know, Tanya started it, and really, I just kind of started doing it. Cause well, now, look, I mean, now, she's. To, she got off in there like she's doing the the boot camp. Yes, sir. You know, and hey, hats off to her. You know, I mean, look, I'm I'm tell you something. I ain't my years for doing that. They pass me. Um, it, I mean, look, if I watch a if I watch a good action movie, I I'm out of breath. She's you know? I, I have to, she's a very athletic person. She's very I mean, yeah, she, I, I know. Um. And when she told me, she said, I'm going to go do the Z- Zumba, Zomba, whatever the hell it's called, mm-hmm. the, the boot camp. Zombie. Yeah. And I said, okay. And when she said, we got to wake up at 4 o'clock, I said, no, we ain't waking up. That's when you say, well, what are we going to milk cows? Or we, yeah. Are we going to squirrel hunting? What are we doing? Well, she she gets up, and she's done This is her second week, and she's committed to it. And she's and Tanya's the type of person, and, and this is one thing that, that I guess – encourages me to keep me going and i'm not sitting here trying to get brownie points i'm just stating the obvious stating the facts but mm-hmm. if she starts something she's damn well gonna finish it oh yeah and um it, she's brought me a long way but um <laughs> that first day she come back home no jack that soreness didn't set in the next day oh yeah it was there that day yeah you know but uh yeah she's she's doing it she's always been she she is Always try to be healthy, mm-hmm. but you know I'm. I have to say I have to take the blame. I am the uh, the bad influence. Mm-hmm. What what what's a Twix bar? Yeah, hey, you know they yeah. ain't but four hundred calories in this, baby. That ain't gonna hurt you today. That's when you say, uh, you know, but these these gummy bears. I mean, hell, they good for you. They made out of fruit juice, and plus they starburst flavor. Yeah, I mean, you know, that's just good. You know, that's something I used to not eat that kind of stuff, like the gummy bears and the, I the jelly beans. Dude, I'm addicted. I was addicted to jelly beans. Now, I'm not a big jelly bean eater, but I, I like him gummy. But now, I tell you what, you were talking about Easter a while ago, them Reese's eggs. Mm. Oh, my word. It, it's the, Cad, the Cadbury. Oh, my me, word. Man. I love them. I had them from the kids. Oh, them Cadbury's is so good. You know, it's like, I guess, you know, this is kind of like a, a, an addiction because, uh, you know, I caught myself during Halloween. I went through all them kids' bags. And got the good stuff. And I did. And they was, and, and Tanya said, you should be ashamed of yourself. You know, because, you know, they all about here, Dad. You know. Well, yeah. look here. Now, what you was trying to do. Make sure there wasn't no razor blades. Or right. You was just doing some quality control. Right. And uh, safety, because we're going to keep our kids safe. Right. And besides that, I mean, you don't want your kids eating all that candy, you see. Now, it's one thing if you do it. Mm-hmm. But it's another thing if them kids do it. You know, we can't, because it's all for the children. It's all for the children. It is. It really is. I know. But, damn, I sure do love them little Tootsie Rolls, them fruity-flavored Tootsie Rolls they got there. I love them. I like the cherry ones the best. The cherry ones and the lime ones. The lime ones are my favorite. And you can mix one of those with a Reese's cup. I've mm. never done that. Now, now it don't sound too good, but let me tell you. Ooh. Now, every now and again, you would go to somebody's house that had the little Hershey miniatures. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, I like the special darks. Really? Ooh, I can't eat the darks. Oh, I would eat the hell out of them. Them and the crackles. <laughs> now, I like the crackles. The crackles. The poor man's crunch. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, boy, that was good. Well, what sucks with this, uh, with what we're doing now is one of my, f- well, it, my favorite holiday candy, Bill, is the chocolate covered cherries. Oh, I know. 
And it's not the chocolate covered cherry. I don't like the shit from the dollar store. I, I you know, no. now I'm not above it. I just don't like it with the, the cream. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like the liquid. The liquid kind. Mm. I got you. I'm following you. Yes, indeed. I'm smelling what you're selling. Mm. I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to sneak me a box. Well, look, what, uh, so like that's, that's like verboten, forbidden. Yeah, you can't have that. I can't have that. All right, well, like, look, let's, 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 let's look at it. From Mud Tooth's point of view. Well, let's get it going. Now, I know it's got chocolate in it. Mm hmm. Okay. But cherries are They're good for you. Are fruit. That's yes. good for you. Probably got antioxidants in it. Mm hmm. You know, fight cancer. And plus, if you eat enough of it, I mean, it'll clean you out. Yeah. So you, you, you help it. I think that's, I, I think that, that's <laughs> lifestyle change as much as hogwash. I- <laughs> I almost had Tanya convinced that they was a Diet Reese cup. <laughs> she said, no, there isn't. I said, yes, there sure is. There is. It comes in a white. It's the it's one in the white package, yeah. which is the white chocolate, right. one of my favorite. Mm-hmm. That's good. She almost fell for it, but nope. No banana. <laughs> but uh, we've done good. Now, the only thing that threw me, you know, she's explained, and she made it sound so great. Oh, we can eat steak and, you know, all the meat and vegetables. Well, well but the thing about that is, though, is it's like The anything. meat ain't but that big. Okay. <laughs> the thing about, well, I mean, all right, just out of curiosity, can you, could you eat a ribeye as big as a plate? Does that, I mean, or, or is it that, no, you can't do that? Uh, you, you can, you can, you know, um, there's no set rule on, I guess, or how much meat you can eat in one setting, but they want you to pour, you know, the big thing is portion. But for me, bro, I'm used to them, you know, them truck stop steaks. You, you used to what my, my father calls a gentleman's portion. Exactly. You know, whatever. Which is the big plate. <laughs> whatever there's a, a birthday cake gets cut or a pie gets cut and you ask daddy, say, well, you, uh, you want a piece? And he's, yeah. And he say, well, how big a piece? He's like, a gentleman's portion. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Something to where I won't get up <laughs> right. at 12 o'clock tonight and come eat the rest of this right. shit. And which I've done. <laughs> I haven't done it this week, but that was something. You that know, my was... grandpa used to do that. We'd wake up in the middle of the night. And eat? And he'd go in there, he'd have him what he called his midnight snack. Now, look, that was every night. I, that, that's what I call it. Now, he would go to, you got to understand that this old man, he went to bed like at 730. Mm-hmm. He would watch the news and Wheel of Fortune and like Walker, Texas Ranger or something. And mm-hmm. he'd go to bed. And he'd wake up at four o'clock in the morning. You know, and go work. Mm-hmm. So, uh, but every night, round about 11, 30, 12 o'clock, you'd hear him in there. And that was, you know, he'd have his midnight snack, whatever it was, you know, some cookies or something. Pop-tart. Just whatever, you know, whatever they had. And a glass of milk, mm-hmm. you know, and then he'd come on back to bed. Yeah, my my thing was, I had done that in, in Little Lauren. Uh, See, man, I don't. I sleep, man. I, you know, if... It, it, you know, if something, if I wake up in the middle of the night, it's because, you know, something, like something going on, you know. I, well, now, there have been times that I have, you know, awakened myself. Or how can I say that? Uh, I woke up mm-hmm. um, pouring milk in my lap by accident. All right. Because I was asleep and got up and got me a and it's not just you. You know when you are Pouring sleeping, milk, you do you it. Laugh? You can't just get the. You know you don't get that little glass of milk that you would normally drink. No, you got to get the big one. You know, half right. a gallon size. And I've woken. I, yeah, I, I've woke up on the couch, and, and you feel that cold sensation, as you would say, <laughs> hit you. And you wake up and you look like, what the hell am I doing? You know, and done ate about half a thing. Of, um, Oreo cookies. <laughs> I've done it. I had a buddy of mine. You talking about stuff happening when you sleep? He uh, he woke up one morning and he went to get something out of his out of his uh, chest of drawers, and <laughs> he said, "All oh, these damn cats." <laughs> and his wife says, "Uh, what are you talking about? Oh, these cats done pissed in my chest of drawers. Done Uh-oh. pissed on my clothes." And she said, "How would a cat?" Open a drawer. <laughs> he said, you got, you got a point. They don't have thumbs. That's right. 
Mm. I seen the old boy pissing his stove one night. <laughs> Sure enough, in his stove. In it, I swear. I swear to goodness. <laughs> Matter of fact, I'll tell you how long it's been. It was about the time I was started hanging out with Bandera Russell Walker, mm. and um, we had come to Wheaties and seen you guys. And I'm not going to mention this guy's name because I've embarrassed him enough about it. Because mm. you know it comes up every time I see him. So we we. Um, so he still got the same stove. I, I asked him <laughs> last time. He didn't want to talk about it. <laughs> that means yes, but. Um, I never forget, you know, finally dozing off to sleep and the door flies open and it's his girlfriend and she's hollering, come get Brandon. I mean, come get, uh, that's enough. But anyway, I'm not editing that. I'm keeping it in there. <laughs> come get Brandon. I said, okay. I thought, you know, because the dude drank a lot. He did. And, and I didn't, I wasn't really wanting to drink a whole lot. So mm-hmm. I figured he might have got up, maybe walked off and he'd been walking in his sleep, maybe walked off in traffic or something, you know. I didn't know what the <laughs> hell was right. going on. So half I walk in and he's in the kitchen and the the, the oven's open and he's letting her go. <laughs> and I said, Hey dude, hey, hey and he just kinda looked at me and went <laughs> <laughs> and he reached down and he closed the stove and walked back in and Laid down and went back to sleep. Well, all right. No girl looked at me and said, "What are we gonna do?" I said, "I'm going back to bed now." <laughs> we ain't doing nothing. If you if you want to clean that, <laughs> you can. So when you say, "Well, what I'm gonna do is I'm not gonna use that oven." <laughs> right, right. And I said, well, "At least he flushed." <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and he put the seat back. You know that? I guess that's in his right. mind, that's what he did. You know. Yeah, and look, why are we tell him? I'm glad you said that. Mm-hmm. Why is it? That it is a man's responsibility. Who who deemed that? A woman. Well, I mean, you know, how come? You know, I mean, why don't why don't y'all leave it up when y'all finish? For us, w- women, yeah, for us. Why don't y'all do that? You know, I mean, do you not have enough sense to not just sit in the toilet? You know, you got to depend on a man. <laughs> to leave the seat down. You really won't mess with them once you do, bros. You take some of that clear tape mm-hmm. and you tape that, um, you leave the seat up, you leave the seat up and tape it to the lid. Mm-hmm. That screws them every time. No, you take, you really want to get them. You take you some saran wrap. Oh, bro. I'm not going to, you see, I can't, I can't say nothing about that because again, my stepdaughter, Lydia, when I first, Tanya and I first got together, it was a little rough. I'm not going to lie. You're putting two families together. Sure. This, this, the, you know, There's she was, story. Right. And she wasn't used to really having to share mm-hmm. or, or, you know, it was her and her mom and right. her sister. So I'm there now. But she gave me 10 times of hell. One of the things she done, and it it didn't get me, it got Tanya. But I believe it was set up for me. Um Cause I would, you know, I would dishwasher at the time. We were still honeymooning now, like mm-hmm. babe, get the dishes. But anyway, she put some scotch tape or something, maybe saran wrap or something other inside the, um, you know how the the uh, the little the tip screws off of the uh, the faucet. Mm-hmm. She put something down in there, and look, when you cut that water on, that shit shot out the sides of it, and everywhere like a. <laughs> Like a cannon, son. <laughs> and I never forget that. But that's something you can do to them, too. But now, I tell you, this is my idea. If you want to break them all, and you, I want you to try this, and you, you tell me how it works. Okay. Just leave the seat down all the time. And just, you know, just piss on it. <laughs> you know, just piss on it and say, yeah, just you want to leave it yeah. down. Yeah. You know, when they go in there and send up. And, 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 and I. Right. If all right, if you go into the bathroom, right, and you know it's going to be an activity that's going to require toilet paper, mm-hmm. okay, tell me what's the first thing you do when you walk in there. First thing I do if it requires toilet paper, I look and make sure there's a roll on the damn. Oh, okay. Yeah. Now, how many times do you get that? Hey, can you give me a roll of toilet paper? Actually, I, I mean, and I'm Do not. Have to, I, I don't. I don't get. Okay. To, I have to say, the only thing Tanya and I butted heads about over the toilet paper is the way they put the toilet paper on the roll. Over. Oh, thank you. 
over. And anybody who don't is a communist heathen. Over. Mm-hmm. It's supposed to cascade over like a waterfall. Not on the over. other side. Yes. Not under. That's how the that's how the devil does it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I've tried to explain that, mm-hmm. and but she won't let. And she does over. it over. And now the kids do it just to. Spite. This is an over household. Mm-hmm. We're not an under household. And she finally got enough of me bitching. I think she does it now, but there for a while she wouldn't. Well, I gotta say, it's she's better about you know not doing that now. And but I back in the old days, for some reason we never could keep toilet paper. Or ketchup. It's now that now we just we never could we never could keep it. Uh-uh. And, uh And and it's back when it was just me and my wife, you know. <laughs> and uh thank God, you know, we lived two houses down from my mom and dad because you know you don't never need that until that store closed. Mm-hmm. So we went to Walmart in Kentwood, mm-hmm. you know, and although there is now, but it don't stay. Really? Long. Yeah, it's one of them little one of them little WalMarts. You know <laughs> the babies. Yeah, it's like it's, it's just like a store. Just so, just for toilet paper, and right? You know, if you forget to pick up a can of peas or something. It's <laughs> well, I mean, but I mean, they don't ain't open all night. Right, right. You know, so um, but yeah, it would. Uh, so I'd have to, you know, call daddy. Daddy, you got some, you know, ketchup. Got some ketchup. Yeah, come get it. You know, and uh, but now, you know, I buy that like I don't know. It's like. 16 rolls or however many it is, you know. Man, I mean, I got a house full of women here. Yeah, it's the same thing at the house. You know, and so it's, you know, there's a lot of toilet paper gets used in this house. So I, you know, you buy a lot. Mm-hmm. And we got it in a bucket. <laughs> uh, it's a decorative bucket. It's a bucket. It says toilet paper on it. Right, yeah, it's, it's, it's uh, you know, and it's right there where you can reach it. Good idea. Yeah. You know, back no, for some reason you didn't have that bucket and you put it on the counter. And that's when I would, hey, you know, <laughs> yeah. can you give me a roll of toilet paper? I was like, well, you didn't. Why didn't you look? <laughs> he knew it was an emergency. You know, why didn't you look? You know where it's at. Just grab it. You know, and that's too damn much trouble. You know, I just, I don't understand. Women, if you would kindly explain that to me, you know, where where the, you know, the responsibility came from that, you know, it's, it's our job to make sure that you, you know, can go to the bathroom in comfort. I, I don't know. Well, I'm pretty sure after Tanya listens to this, she's going to explain it to you Saturday. Well, that's, fine. To <laughs> that's fine. And that's fine. <laughs> you know, I, I, I welcome that debate. Uh, and it'll be a debate. I mean, it's not going to be. A- yeah, I got to say, it's equal opportunity at our house. You know. I got to say, everybody, I mean, you, if you don't, you know, Ta- I'll tell you what, Tanya ain't coming. If I'm in that bathroom and need some toilet paper, she ain't coming. She's 20 feet away. She ain't coming. Well, you know, now I'm going to tell you something now. When I'm, when I'm in there, I don't, I don't want to talk to nobody. That's quiet time. Well, I mess with her sometimes. Like, won't you come back in and sit in the bathroom with me? Mm-mm. Talk to me. No. Let's no. plan our day out, baby. See, like, like, see, that's where, like, I don't even want to talk to nobody. Mm-mm. That's my time. That's, you know, that's me. That's, that's my time. That's my time. And, and I don't, I ain't got nothing I want to discuss. Mm-mm. You know, and the thing about it is, is if you're in there, then that's your time. And I ain't nothing I want to discuss. Well, it's the same thing. Now, I used now, to. My bride is not that way. <laughs> She's a little bit more of a free spirit when yeah, that comes. Come on you know, comes like, I'm like, oh, no. <laughs> you know, you just, just, I can wait. Poor Tanya going to kill me for saying this and we'll end on this. But we talking about shitty situations pretty much here. <laughs> but uh, hey, do you remember the first time you, you, Mrs. Mudtooth broke wind in front of you? Yeah. It was a long, it was a, y'all probably dated a long time. Oh, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. You ain't right out the gate. No. You ain't right out the gate. And after that first time, when they realized that you're, you're kind of okay with it, which for a man, guys, if you're listening, that means she's in love. Oh, yeah. Cause they comfortable. Once they do that, that she loves you. Yeah. And, and that's it. See, and, and what they'll do is they'll play it off like they let it slip. Yeah. Oops. Now, they wasn't nothing accidental about that. All right. Not one damn thing Mm-mm. about a woman farting in front of you is an accident. All right. If it not, unless it's like some kind of 
she got some like the bubble guts or something. But <laughs> uh, I mean, usually it's a planned out kind of deal. They test in the water. Mm-hmm. Let me see what he does. Yeah, see how he does. Does he does he break for the for the, say? Ooh, look at the time. I got to go. And if you're sitting in the living room and she's in the bedroom and you hear that son of a bitch all the way. From the bedroom to the living room over the TV and the kids and everything else, and you know, you know. She just will be calling you back there. Well, I can't help but get up and walk back there and see. Baby, did you fart? Yeah. And she, you know, which Tanya, she's, you know, she's hilarious anyway with that shit. She don't, you know, she don't really want to do it, but she will. And, uh, you know, and she got them silent but deadly. And she uh-huh. gonna, she, I'm probably going to sleep on the couch, but it's okay. But, you know, you'd be walking behind me like, God. What the hell, dude? Do you know? Did you fart? And she, yeah, shut up, and get in the car. You know? Yeah, well, yes. Yeah, I'm getting the car. It's gonna be all up in there. <laughs> yeah. Do you know that they have a whole genre of pornography dedicated to farts? That's just nasty. I'm talking about men and women farting on one another's noses. Mm-mm. Yes, absolutely. Mm-mm. Absolutely. That's some strange folks. That's where we are as a society. We farting in each other's faces. Lord have mercy. You fuck around and get the pink eye. With that will. said, we went from Christmas <laughs> to being full of shit. <laughs> and we're going to wind down. We've been on here for about an hour and a half. Well, look, now. we want to remind y'all come see the show. And Crowley. And Crowley. Come see the Ronnie McDowell and Friends. Nothing but the hits tour. Starring. Ronnie McDowell and Tommy Kay. Ken Mellons. Ken Mellons, Jeff Bates. And Deborah Allen. Deborah Allen. And- the Blend, which I'm kind of excited to see these group of guys, in which the aca- there's a acapella genre now that's, that's pretty big, but these right. cats are doing some doo-wop stuff, in which that's kind of my favorite kind oh, of stuff. Yeah, so, cool. um, And then, of course, the vivacious Mandy Barnett. <laughs> <laughs> Lord have mercy. Be sure to like, share, subscribe. Support us by shopping at Amazon going by going to radiorandomnetwork.com forward slash Amazon. You can get that free audio book and a 30 day free trial at now, audibletrial.com. Now, folks, forward slash backstage. You, you know, that ain't that hard. Mm-mm. You know, I mean, y- you go into the same place anyway. Just use our link. Just use our link. Put it in your favorites bar. That's it. And bookmark you, that trip. Right, bookmark it, and then you won't have to type it in all the time. And you still go to Amazon. It's still the same Amazon. And all it does was, it, you know, is it, it helps us a little bit. And it don't cost you not one thin crying dime. Mm-mm. You still get the same good service and good prices and frit shipping and all that from Amazon. And they just pat us on the back a little bit and say thank you. Yeah. That's it. We got some big things coming up here in 2016. Big doings. Big doings. We're going to be streaming 24 7 on a actual, uh, it's going to be, I guess, radio and pretty much just podcast to radio. Mm-hmm. So that's the name of the campaign. And, uh, we got some, I got a bunch of campaigns in line. We got the, uh, country, classic country's not dead campaign that's going to be coming up where, uh, we're going to be showcasing, um, Americana genre, which is one of your favorites. Oh, hell And yeah. also our friends from the classic country genre, what we like to call the good stuff. hmm And uh, also we got Pano Play. We're going to be hitting them shortly. And got a lot of stuff going on. And uh, this will be the – this is going to be uh, the next show, a couple of shows you will hear, like I said, it'll be from uh, Nothing But The Hits. Right. And uh, you want to tune in that, that – that, that, you know, that – that show after the first of the year, because I imagine it's going to be a doozy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We'll have a lot to talk about. I'm hashtag RDM Russell Devin McClain. And you got the mud tooth here. And um, happy holidays. Uh, you know, Merry Christmas. And Merry Christmas. Well, I was going to say that. I'm going to say, say Merry Christmas. And uh, happy Hanukkah to all our Jewish friends out there. I don't. Well, no, I take that back. I know a couple. Do they wear the yarmulkes? Uh, well, they women. Oh, okay. So no, <laughs> I don't think they have. I don't think the women are required to wear them. Maybe not. I don't know. With all that said, be sure and visit the website radiorandomnetwork dot com for all the exclusive uh, interviews, news, and twenty sixteen will bring a mud tooth blog and sign up for that uh, 
newsletter. That's it. And you can send us an email, which, by the way, don't let me forget to give you your password. Yeah. Give me a password. It's mudtooth at radiorandomnetwork.com. It's a long password. It, that's uh-huh. the email. <laughs> Good one. Russell at <laughs> radiorandomnetwork.com on Twitter at RRN Live. We'll see y'all in 2016. Time, same place next week.